What is a social network analysis? You've probably seen those colorful network graphs in newspaper articles or scientific papers. They look like a lot of work to create, right? Or maybe not? Actually, you can conduct such an analysis without extensive programming knowledge or expensive software. If you want to know how to do it, then you should sharpen your pencil and take notes. In this video, I will explain everything about social network analysis, where it comes from, what it's good for and how you can apply it. By the end of this video, you'll have all the links and information you need to conduct your first social network analysis. And now, without further ado, welcome to Shrive! To understand social network analysis, we first need to be aware of its theoretical basis, network theory, which is part of mathematical graph theory. Network theory deals with the relationships between specific objects. In the context of social network analysis, these objects are usually social actors. These relationships and objects are represented using a graph, meaning a diagram that connects two or more objects. In the vocabulary of social network analysis, an object is called a node or sometimes vertex. The relationship between two or more nodes is represented by edges. These are the lines between the nodes. A relationship can be either undirected or directed. Let's imagine our network represents the relationships between Instagram accounts of famous politicians. The nodes are the politicians and the edges can be, for example, the follower relationships between them. If Kamala Harris follows Donald Trump, but he does not follow her back, there is a directed edge from Kamala Harris to Donald Trump, usually shown with an arrow. Kamala Harris is the starting node and Donald Trump is the ending node. If Donald Trump also follows Joe Biden, but not Kamala Harris, Donald Trump is an adjacent node to both Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. However, Joe Biden is not an adjacent node to Kamala Harris. When facing a larger network, you might want to know certain properties of individual nodes or determine which nodes are particularly important or play a specific role in the network. For this, you can calculate various centrality measures. But before we come to those, there's one more measure I want to show you, and this is density. The density measure helps you to describe a characteristic of the entire network. It indicates how many edges there are in the network relative to the maximum possible number of edges. For example, it shows how many users in our group of politicians are connected with each other compared to a scenario where everyone is connected with everyone. If all nodes are connected, the density is 1 or 100%. So you always get a value between 0 and 1 for density. Now let's look at some centrality measures. They do not describe properties of the whole network, but single nodes. The degree centrality indicates how many edges a node has. If Kamala Harris has nine follower relationships, regardless in which direction, the degree of her node is nine. For directed graphs, we distinguish between incoming edges, so-called in-degree, and outgoing edges, represented by the out-degree. The closeness centrality measure indicates the average length of the shortest path between a node and all other nodes. It shows how central a node is within the entire network. For example, how many contacts must Kamala Harris go through on average to reach certain politicians? The fewer, the more central she is in the network. Betweenness centrality. This measure indicates how often a node lies on the shortest path between two other nodes. Nodes with high betweenness centrality often lie between two or more clusters of nodes, essentially forming a bridge between them. Eigenvector centrality. This measure indicates how important the neighbors of a node are. The more important neighbors a node has, the higher the value. The best example of this measure is Google's PageRank algorithm. It follows the rule that a web page is ranked higher in search results the more other important pages link to it. So if I have a blog post on my website and it is linked by major sites like CNN, BBC and Forbes, 
it's better than if it is linked by two local newspapers and an unknown blogger. Now let's look at the applications of social network analysis. The first application domain for this method is academic research. Theoretically, every discipline within the social sciences can use social network analysis. But it goes beyond that. For example, in any given discipline, you could analyze and visualize citation relationships between papers, universities or scientists. Most commonly, you'll find social network analyses in political science, communication studies or sociology. Data journalism also often uses the method of social network analysis. Here's an example from the New York Times about romantic insights one can draw from Facebook maps. Now the basis for conducting any social network analysis is data. In most cases, this data is obtained through web scraping or an API, for example of a social media platform. If you just want to practice, there are plenty of datasets available online for free. You can try Google's search for datasets, the platform Kaggle or data.gov. Data doesn't always have to be collected automatically. It's also possible to create small networks by manually entering your data into an Excel sheet or digitizing it in some other way. For a social network analysis, it is important that the data points reference each other. For example, using an ID for each node that is referenced in any other node that has a connection to that node. Only then can you calculate centrality measures and visualize a network with software. Now let's come to the analysis part. The two most common tools for conducting a social network analysis are R and Gephi. Both programs can be downloaded and used for free. With R you'll need some time to get used to it as you will need to learn or look up the programming language commands. If you want to avoid programming languages entirely, I'd recommend Gephi. This software has a complete graphical user interface and you can perform all sorts of tasks related to social network analysis. It still requires some time to learn Gephi, but there are great tutorials available on YouTube or you can get help in Gephi support groups on Facebook. A social network analysis with very large datasets requires quite a bit of computing power. To prevent your PC or laptop from reaching its limits and Gephi from crashing, you should filter your data beforehand or use a virtual machine. The next steps to start your first social network analysis would be to first read the foundational book on social network analysis by the authors Wasserman and Faust from 1994. Two, get a free dataset to practice. Three, Watch YouTube tutorials on R or Gephi and apply what you learned until you're an expert. 4. Join Facebook groups where you can ask questions. 5. Learn by doing. and 6. Have fun.